Breaking news from Afghanistan. An Afghan soldier has opened fire inside a base, wounding three U.S. soldiers. Officials said the man was shot and killed to end the attack. There is no word at this hour on the condition of the three who were wounded. Of course, several U.S. troops have been killed in Afghanistan in recent years in so-called insider attacks carried out by Afghan police or soldiers. Now turning to politics, Democrats are calling on the FBI to put President Trump's wiretap allegations to rest tomorrow when Director James Comey testifies before Congress. I think it's really important because that's a terrible accusation to make. And what are they doing but doubling down on it now, quoting sources saying that the president uh, worked with the British uh, intelligence to also spy on the president. Of course, it's not true. So let's just grow up. Why doesn't it grow up? The Justice Department, uh, the FBI has to really clear this. Joining me now, NBC's intelligence and national security correspondent, uh, Ken Delaney. And Ken, good to see you again. Let's start with uh, what we heard uh, there. What do we expect uh, and do we expect Comey to knock down these allegations tomorrow? And, and could he if he wanted to? Well, Jacob, I really expect this to be one of the more dramatic days of the Trump presidency. And, it, and all the signs are pointing to the idea that, that Comey will speak to this wiretapping claim in some way and explain why it isn't true. Now, when you say put it to rest, uh, I don't think you can put it to rest as long as the president of the United States continues to make the claim that it is true. But for it to have happened, the FBI would have had to have been involved. And Jim Comey and NSA Director Mike Rogers can explain to the committee and to the public why that is just not possible, why President Obama could not have ordered a wiretap in Trump Tower, why there's no evidence of that. Certainly that's what we've been hearing all week from both Republicans and Democrats. So to the extent it can be put to rest as a factual matter, I think they'll try to do that tomorrow. This morning, Ken, we heard from top members of the House Intelligence Committee, Democrat Congressman uh, Adam Schiff, Republic, Republican Congressman uh, Devin Nunes. We also heard from Jackie Spire right here, uh, Spear, I should say, right here on MSNBC. What stood out to you? Well, so Adam Schiff went further than he had in the past in saying there is circumstantial evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russian hacking operation interfering in the election. That was, he hadn't said that before. Now, Devin Nunez, his counterpart, the Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, said on another network that he hadn't seen any evidence. My suspicion there is that, is that Nunez, who's a Trump supporter, you know, takes a narrower view of what evidence is than Schiff, a Democrat and a Clinton supporter. So how did, uh, Ken, if I could just jump in, how do you, I mean, is this really as simple as that? Is it coming down to politics or are these two, I mean, we know they're looking at the same information, right? Yeah, they're, they're both getting the same highly classified briefings. I mean, but Schiff is, Schiff's point is circumstantial evidence, which is not proof, right? It, I mean, we're aware already in the public domain of circumstantial evidence. NBC News has been reporting on, on intercepts of meetings between Trump associates and Russians. What were those meetings about? Why did they occur? That's presumably what the investigation is, is, is happening to, to, to look into. And so Schiff is looking at that and so maybe some other things that we're not aware of and saying that's circumstantial evidence. Nunez is saying no hard proof. And so, you, you know, we talked about what you suspect to come out of tomorrow's hearing and what, how much Comey can actually uh, reveal. Let's say he does come out and, and confirm this uh, circumstantial uh, evidence uh, that we've been hearing uh, members of the Intelligence Committee talk about uh, today. Then what? Well, I, I actually doubt that he will do that. This is highly classified stuff. It's a counterintelligence investigation. I'm, gonna, I'm looking to see whether he'll even confirm that the FBI is examining those things. That, that's a question in my mind. I think he's going to talk more about the Russian hacking operation, the thing that the intelligence community has already presented in public, you know, what they did, how they did it, wh whether there, potentially whether there were any Americans involved. And, and it's really difficult, though, for him to talk about a pending counterintelligence investigation. Jacob. So you're saying, Ken, this isn't going away anytime soon. Uh, Ken, stick Absolutely with us for not. one second because uh, I want to bring in Naveed Jamali. He is a former FBI double agent. He's the author of How to Catch a Russian Spy. Naveed, uh, good to see you. What do you expect out of tomorrow's hearing? I, I agree with Ken. I think that, uh, you know, we're going to, they're going to have to address this, this claim by the president that essentially there is a wiretap. But the, the danger with that is exactly as, as Ken is saying, in that the FBI has sort of been painted into a corner where they, by either admitting it or denying it, they're essentially admitting or denying that there's a larger investigation. And as you know, just from a law enforcement st standpoint, you know, they don't like to admit that investigations are going on until they're ready to present something. So I think Comey's going to do a lot of fancy footwork. And I, I have to say, 
many of us are probably going to be left wanting in terms of some of the larger questions. But I think we will absolutely, as Ken said, get a direct answer about the president's claim of a wiretap. I, I have to ask you, uh, Naveed, you have been invited by the Senate uh, in, uh, House Intelligence Committee, excuse me, to speak about your own experience with Russian intelligence. Uh, what's, the, what's the point you want to make most? What are you going to say? Well, look, when I look at Russia and when I look at how they do this, there's always this idea that Russian intelligence focuses on actually stealing information. And in my experience, what I found is that, no, that's, that's part of it. But really what the Russians are often after is, frankly, buying people. And when you look at you know, Flynn or, or, or uh, Roger Stone or any of these other sort of associates uh, and the question of did they have contact with, with Russia, I think that there may have very well have been a two-pronged part to this attack. One was to mess directly with our elections, but the second was uh, an, an entree by the Russians to, to try to get into the Trump inner circle. And that, now that not doesn't necessarily mean that those people they contacted were doing anything illegal, but I certainly think that there was a concerted effort to try to, to make contact and, in fact, pot potentially manipulate people. And so the consequences there, Ken, does that square with what you're reporting and, and the information that we have uh, at present? It does, in a sense, but the interesting question, and Naveed's the expert on this, is um, whether, even if that happened, whether there will be criminal charges emerging from it. And if not, then what happens? Presumably, the Congressional Intelligence Committee still conduct a thorough investigation and will be able to tell the American public at the end of the day whether anybody in the Trump campaign colluded with this covert operation to destabilize our democracy, essentially. Uh, Naveed, do you want to respond to that? Absolutely. No, Ken's right. Again, it's worth noting that, look, foreign contact with even intelligence officers, even with an attempt to recruit someone, it happens quite a bit. It happens day in and day out. That act does not necessarily rise to the level of something that's illegal, nor is it necessarily something that should be prosecuted. The question is, did these people, as we saw with General Flynn coming back and saying, you know, after the fact, registering as a foreign agent, did these people, once that contact happened, did they follow the proper protocol and report it? And if they didn't, that is something that is a concern and potentially, if they hold a clearance, that is something that may, you know, be elevated to the, to the level of, you know, looking into it for something that could be prosecutable. I want to play another piece of sound here because Schiff's colleague, Adam Schiff, uh, who we heard from this morning, uh, Will Hurd, a Texas Republican, he's also a former undercover CIA officer, offered a very different take on Russia's role. Uh, let's all listen to that. Grizzly step. This is how the intelligence community refers to uh, the Russian involvement or, or attempts to manipulate our elections. It's going to go down in the history of Mother Russia as the greatest covert action campaign, not because uh, President Trump won. There was no manipulation of, of the vote tallying machines. It's going to go down as the greatest covert action because it drove a, created a wedge, whether real or perceived, between the White House, the intelligence community, and the American public. And Naveed, what's your response to that? Absolutely. Uh, I think that that is, at, at its core, that was Russia's primary motivation. Look, they want to destabilize us, but also they just want to make us look weak. And it's not so much that the audience necessarily was the American people, but it very well could have been former Soviet states. There's a large push in, in Eastern Europe to, to join NATO and things like that, and that terrifies the Russians. So I think that a large part of this was to say to those, those countries, look, American democracy, the, the democracy that you aspire to become, the, the NATO that you uh, want to join, may not be what you think it is and I think that was look that may have been in part a large motive of what they did of why they did what they did you hear a lot of Republicans saying that that the biggest issue here isn't um, President Trump's claims about wiretapping um, but instead the leaks uh, of classified uh, information uh, Ken uh, what's your take on that is there some truth to that well, obviously, there have been a lot of stories about things that have been classified. But as an intelligence reporter, I'm not going to, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, that's, that's my job. I make my living from that stuff. So, <laughs> but going back to, you know, Will Hurd, he's a former covert operative in Pakistan. He knows exactly what he's talking about. I completely agree with that. I mean, look, we are tied up in knots over this as a nation. And look at what it's done to the credibility of the president of the United States. I mean, he contributed to this, obviously. But this whole issue, how, how are folks going to believe President Trump if he has to address the nation and talk about a strike on North Korea now based on, intelligence that he's seen from the intelligence community that he's now been in a fight with and that he's questioned you know the veracity of it's it's just uh, it, the russians if, if that was their aim they certainly appear to have succeeded jacob all right we're going to leave it there Nabi jamali ken delanian uh, good to see you both thanks so much uh, for taking the time appreciate it great Thank to be you. with you thanks coming up how the tech industry is dealing with president trump's revised travel ban that is next and ahead on meet the press at the top of the hour director of the office of management and budget mick mulvaney and congressman adam schiff we've been talking about him of the house intelligence committee stick around it's a divided country people ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe.